Hey everybody, my name is Pete, and today I'm walking you through step-by-step -step how to fix errors for Excel's most popular formulas. Stick around to the end of the video where I give you seven simple steps to handle any error that Excel throws your way. I've divided this video up into time stamps so you can jump around to the relevant content. And in the description of this video is a link to the workbook that I use. You can use yourself if you check out that link. Let's get started right now. So the first error we're gonna cover is the value error. And the value error, it's a general error that says there's something wrong with the way your formula is typed or the cells you're referencing. So let's walk through some specific causes. The examples are gonna be over here on the left. And on the right, we've got sample data from our coffee company. So the first way you can get a hash value error is if your data is formatted as text. So here we're gonna subtract costs from revenue. And we're gonna get a hash value error. And if you look closely, there's some spaces in that revenue number that are making Excel treated as text. And you can see that Excel thinks it's text up here. And if you have a lot of these, you can use the is text formula and it will tell you whether or not Excel thinks it's text for all of your data and you can see it's, it's true here. So the, you can go in here and you can manually remove all the spaces. You can also use the find and replace menu. So you can find a space and you can replace it with nothing. And when you make that replacement, the formula is fixed and the hash value error is removed. The second way you can get the hash value error is when dates are formatted as text. So we're gonna find the difference between these two dates and Excel is gonna return a hash value error. And like the example before, there's a space in here that's hidden and Excel's interpreting these dates as text. And so I'm gonna paste them down here and I'm gonna to go to data, text to columns, and I want delimited and I wanna put a space and I'm gonna finish. And so that's gonna convert those dates to uh, actual dates. And when I paste those in, the formula is fixed, the hash error, hash value error is removed, and we're good to go. So the next reason you can get a hash value error is if your formula refers to another hash value error. So in this instance, I'm gonna sum these cells and get a hash value because there's a hash value in the source data. So you can go in and, and you can fix that hash value in the source data and that will fix your formula, but you can also write an array formula. So I'm gonna write an array formula and that's basically wrapping your sum formula in an if is error. So if this range is an error, return a blank, otherwise just return a range. And this is an array formula, so you'll have to either press Control shift enter if you have an earlier version of Excel, or just enter is gonna work. And that's going to remove the hash value error and get your formula working again. And this technique works not just for sums, it works for averages, sum products, if any formula that's referring to a hash value in the range. So another way you can get a hash value error is with a formula like a sum ifs or a sum products where you have two different ranges. So in this example, you can see the the sum range goes through row eight, but the criteria range goes through row seven, and that's delivering a hash value. You need consistent ranges, so if you drag down this range so that they're equivalent, they're both going through row eight, you're gonna fix that hash value error and the formula is gonna work as expected. Formulas like sum ifs and count ifs can give you an error if they're referring to a workbook that's closed. And so to find out if they're if your spreadsheet's referring to a workbook, go to data and click edit links. And you can see that there is a, a workbook that it's referring to. And when you open that source, that hash value error is gonna be removed and the formula is gonna be back working properly. The last hash value error involves a VLOOKUP and we're gonna stick on VLOOKUP when we go to the hash NA section next. But um, VLOOKUP requires a column index number. And if that column index number is less than one or contains text, it's gonna return a hash value. And so when I make this column index number one, you'll see that the formula is fixed, the hash value is removed, and it's working as expected. The most common cause of the hash NA error is with VLOOKUP when a formula can't find a reference value. So let's dive into the specific instances for pound NA. 
In this first example, we're gonna cover what happens when a value truly doesn't exist. So we've got a VLOOKUP for looking for customer 525. And if you look at the lookup table, it's not there and it's truly not there. And so in those types of instances where the value just isn't there and, and the hash NA is actually valid, I wrap the formula in an if error. And so we can say, if it's an error, say inactive customer. So that way, rather than returning that hash NA, Excel returns a little more visually pleasing error, which says inactive customer. The next reason why you can get a hash NA error is if your data is stored as text. So in this example, we've got a VLOOKUP. We want to see which customer spent $42 on revenue. We're doing a VLOOKUP on 42, and we can see 42 in the lookup table, but it's giving us a hash NA. That's because if you look closely, that 42 is formatted as text and that green arrow is a signal and also Excel tells you it's formatted as text up here. All of the solutions that we covered in the hash value error, the is text formula, the find and the replace techniques, and the text to columns will work here. In this instance, I'm just going to type in 42 and you can see when I do that, the hash NA error is removed and the VLOOKUP works as expected. The last way you can get a hash NA error is with a hidden space. So just this example, we're looking for customer 993 in the lookup table, and you can see customer 993 is there, but Excel's returning an hash NA error. And one way to identify hidden spaces is to use the len formula. Len counts the number of characters in a given string. And so when we use that len formula, we see that there's eight characters in that last record, customer 993, which means that there's a hidden space. So the best way to handle hidden spaces is to use the trim formula. I'm going to wrap this table array in the trim formula, and trim just removes extra spaces. And so we're going to trim all of the values in that table array, which removes those extra spaces. And we'll see that customer 993 bought a filter, the formula works, and the hash NA error is removed. Excel shows the div zero error when a number is being divided by zero. And a lot of the time, the formula can't be avoided, especially if you table, have a table like this where you're calculating cost as a percentage of revenue for a set of products. And as you can see here, Excel returns a div zero for these first two examples because there's a zero in a cell and then there's a blank in a cell. And so in this instance, I'm going to wrap these in an if error. So if it's an error, just say no sales instead of div zero. That fixes that div zero error, cleans up your spreadsheet, and gets everything back in working order. The hash name error occurs because there's a typo somewhere in the formula. So in this example, we have a misspelled formula. I'm trying to sum this range, and it's giving me a hash name. And when I fix that typo, the formula works as expected. Similarly, if you spell, misspell the range of cells, you will get a hash name error. So in this instance, we're missing a colon. We've misspelled the range of cells. When I enter that colon, the formula is fixed and works as expected. Another way you can get a hash name error is with a lookup function like VLOOKUP or SUMIFS. It requires that lookup value to be in quotation marks. So you can see customer 287 is in the table here, but we're getting a hash name, and that's because you need to wrap this in quotes. And so when we wrap that in quotes, the VLOOKUP works, the hash name is gone, and the formula works as expected. Lastly, if you misspell the named range, you're also going to get a hash name error. So if you see here, we do have a named range called cost over here, but the formula is misspelling it. So when I fix that and I press enter, the hash name is removed and the formula works as expected. The ref error shows when a formula refers to a cell that's not valid. So here we've got a formula that's summing these three cells. And for example, if I were to delete this cell, that's going to deliver a hash ref error because you're deleting a cell or a sheet or a tab that the formula is referring to. So there's two ways that you can handle this. The first is you can control Z and undo it so that doesn't happen again. But the other thing you can do is if you wrap this, rather than just using the plus signs, you can do a sum formula. And a sum formula is more immune to that type of an error. So when I delete this and the, sh the cells shift up, you can see that the sum formula doesn't return a hash ref error. The next way you can get a hash ref error is through relative references. And references by default are relative, which means that if I were to take this formula here and paste it in the cells above, 
you'll see that the cells that are being referred to increase as the formula goes up in the cells and eventually there is no cell above G1 and H1 and that delivers a hash ref error. So one way to overcome this is to just use an absolute reference which means enter the cell and press F4 and that means no matter where you paste that formula it'll always refer to the same cells and the hash ref error is removed. The last way you can get a hash ref error is with an invalid reference in a formula like VLOOKUP or INDEX. So as you can see here we're looking up customer 993 in this lookup table and asking for the third column. Well it's only a two column lookup table. So you can't ask for the third column of a two column lookup table and Excel delivers a hash ref. So you either need to update this number the column index number or you can expand the lookup range that will fix the hash ref error and the formula is good to go. The num error in Excel occurs when the formula contains numeric values that aren't valid. The first way you can get a hash num error is with an invalid number. So here we're going to take a square root of this number and it's going to give us a num error because the square root of a negative number does not exist. So the way to overcome that is to wrap that number in an absolute value formula. And that interprets the number as a positive number, fixes the formula, and the hash num error is removed. The next way you can get a hash num error is if the number is just too big to, for Excel to support. So here's a really, really big number, and that's going to deliver a hash num error. If your number is too big for Excel to support, you've got to figure out a way to make it smaller, divide it by a thousand, divide it by a million and report on it that way. The last way you can get a num error is using financial formulas like IRR or rate. So if you apply the IRR formula to this series of cash flows, you're gonna get a num error because the IRR formula wants a, Z, a year zero cash flow to be negative. Um, and so when you update that year zero cash flow to be negative, the formula is fixed, that num error is removed. The null error doesn't happen that much, but if you've got one, you've come to the right place. The first way you can get that is with a missing colon, comma, or operator. So let's run through that quickly. This has a null error because it expects a colon between these cell ranges. When you enter that colon, the null error is removed. In this instance, these sum ranges are missing a comma. When you enter the comma, the null error is removed. And lastly, this formula is missing that last operator so if when we add a plus sign the null error is removed and all the formulas are working as expected. The last way you can get a null error is if you're using an intersect operator between two ranges that don't intersect. So here you're looking for the intersection of two ranges that don't intersect and that's going to give you a null error. So make sure that the two ranges intersect. When I drag this one over and there is an intersection the formula is fixed and the null error is removed. Here's my seven simple steps for evaluating any error that you get in Excel. Break it down, if you've got a big formula like this, break it down into its constituent parts. Look at the VLOOKUP, look at the sum, figure out where the error is and, and fix that piece. And the formula auditing tab in Excel can actually help you out a lot. The evaluate formula is super helpful and it'll walk you through step by step to figure out where that error is. Check for misspelling. Check for text in hidden spaces using formulas like len and trim and is text. Look for a range mismatch in formulas like some ifs and some products where it requires ranges that are the same. Check for deleted cells or deleted sheets or even a closed workbook that might be causing uh, hash ref or other errors. And lastly, if that error is supposed to be there, wrap it in an if error so you can control what Excel returns when there's an error. Thanks so much for tuning in. Click that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all my videos. If you learned something, press that thumbs up so I know that this was helpful to you. If you want me to cover something else, let me know in the comments section below, and I'll see you next time.